Hello everybody, this is Yoko's Anime Reactions, and... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Anyway, uh, this is gonna be my review for My Hero Academia Season 5, Episode 12. I'm sorry for getting this out so late. I just hadn't really recorded anything. I want to get to the point where I can record freely and not have to worry. With how things are going at home and at work. With getting called in at any point, essentially. That's why I usually take my lunches a little earlier than most people would. Because that way, if worst case... I get called into work at 11, for example, and I have to close for whatever reason. I don't have to worry about waiting until 5, 6 o'clock to eat anything. Or, you know, I have to wait. I get called into at 11 and then get, have to work for a few hours until the next people arrive for their shift and then have to wait until then to have any kind of food. So that's why I always try and make sure to have my lunch then that way I won't have to worry about not getting to eat until late <coughs> excuse me uh, anyway um, yeah I will try and get some stuff recorded I will have a lot of recording to do for the new Pokemon series that I'm planning on doing um, wish me luck on that I'm going to need it I'm going to need to figure out a lot of things, like how to, you know, take like little snippets of a picture and use it, because I, that way you guys don't have to see the whole screen every time when I go to Cerebi. So I can just make a nice little background and then put that little snippet of information on front for you guys to see. It's going to be annoying, but it'll be worth it, because it'll make my videos look a lot better. Anyway, um, My Hero Academia, Season 5, Episode 12. Uh, we find out that All Might had no clue about Black Whip or the fact that all that he could have possibly unlocked the other quirks of the other holders. To be completely honest, if he had done that, he wouldn't, uh, he would have probably easily beaten, uh, All for One before. Had he had access to all that. And I mean... Even just probably Black Whip. He, if he had just had access to Black Whip, he might have had a lot easier time of possibly defeating All for One. Possibly. We don't know, because that's just a what-if situation that is never going to that is never gonna play out. Uh, we can do a speculate on that, but I expect that he would have had a much easier time, to be if I am being completely honest. So, um... Yeah, Bakugo makes a point that all for one and one for all are kind of similar, essentially. In this situation, the only way they are similar is that both of them, you know, have multiple quirks, essentially. All for one has multiple quirks due to amassing them. One for all's got multiple quirks now because of the previous holders of the, of the quirk. Which makes me wonder, what the heck are the other quirks of everybody else? Because apparently Nana had a quirk as well. When she got one for all, so I am really eager to see that. But yeah, um, also Bakugo kept trying to get Deku to use Black Whip again against him. I'm guessing just to be able to test it out on himself because he didn't get to really, they didn't get to see too much of it. And he had a point that essentially that if you can't call on that power when you need it, when you're in danger, what is the point of having it? Because, yeah, if he ends up in a situation where it's either life or death, he would need to call on the power, obviously. Though, I think he would have to really let his emotions get the better of him again, because I think that's what, goes, that, that's what caused it in the first place. And, um, yeah, Aizawa wants Monoma to come to see Eri the next day, and when he does, I mean, his reasoning after we find this out makes perfect sense. He wants to see if Monoma can copy Eri's quirk. And use it. And if he could, he wants Monoma to work with that quirk 
work on how to use it, how to use it properly and safely, and then teach Aerie how to use it. That would have been their best, I, that would have been the best idea for Aerie's quirk, to be completely honest. Sadly, that quirk is a blank. And it turns out that Monoma cannot copy quirks that accumulate power, or cure stockpile stuff. Like Midoriya's quirk, he can only copy the base thing of one for all, the core, but he can't copy all the stuff that's been accumulated so far. He can't copy, like, for example, he could try to copy Fat Gum's quirk, but he would still stay skinny, and thus the quirk would be useless, because the quirk uh, takes, you have to be, have a lot of fat in order to even make that quirk work the way it's supposed to. So that quirk would be a blank, and Aries, uh, we don't know. We don't know what the reason is as to why he can't copy her quirk. Because as far as we know, it does not accumulate anything in order to be able to use it properly. I don't know. But yeah, uh, the idea of Monoma teaching Aerie how to use her quirk with his own quirk would have been... It would have been the best idea, to be completely honest. That would have been a good way to get her to, her to learn how to use it. But sadly, it's not to be at the moment. At least as far as we know, because... But yeah, Aerie is now wanting to learn how to use her quirk properly, which, oh uh, boy, how are they even going to do that? Because her quirk does not work on solid objects. It works on only living things. So he would have to have live test subjects for her to use it on. I would assume they're going to grab, like, something like flies, bugs, animal, little animals, stuff like that, in order for her to test them on. Because that's the only way I can see her working on her quirk. Because it has to be on a live, a living creature. Human, animal, plant, maybe not plant, uh, bugs, stuff like that. So she would have to be able to do that. Oh boy. I'm eager to see that trading, yet at the same time I'm a little scared too. But yeah, people at My Hero Academia, if you actually see this video, I doubt you will. But if you do, your bet you know what you can do to make a lot of money? S make an airy plushie, a soft plushie, and sell it as part of your, uh, like your Funko Pop stuff. People would buy the crap out of that because most everybody who knows Aerie wants to hug her. And I do too. <laughs> I would love to hug that little girl. And that would be your best bet to, <laughs> to be able to do that, in my opinion. Anyway, uh, apparently uh, Shinzo is going to join the Hero Course in their second year. Which, Hero Course, we will not, we don't know yet. They haven't revealed that yet. So it's going to be the Class 1A or Class 1B. Either one would benefit greatly from Shinzo having, being in their class. Here's hoping that uh, if he joins Class 1B, he doesn't get influenced by Monoma. All I gotta say. <laughs> but yeah, they end up having a little bit of a get-together later with both classes, and for some strange reason they have Minetta strapped to a chair and watch, being forced to watch something. But why? He wasn't really that perverted, and even then it was an accident. I mean, like, all he did was jump in to protect uh, her, to protect Mina from that attack, and it was just a happy accident that he got knocked into her. I mean, seriously, yes, he's a pervert, but, I mean, it's not, he didn't do that for that. He did it to protect his teammate. Well, then again, I could be, I could be completely wrong on that one. Uh, but, yeah, still, you can't really punish him for doing what he was supposed to do, which was protect his teammates, even if it did end up in a happy accident on his part. Anyway, uh, the rest of the episode is... Bakugo and Todoroki going to get their hero licenses now that they finished all the remedial stuff. Good thing is, right after they get it, they get to use their hero licenses. Because a bunch of evil, stupid villains decide to go and sweep through the city, grabbing people's walls and purses as they go. Thankfully, they were able to stop them. Really easily, I might add. And, yeah. I am curious as to what else is going to end up happening with this show, and yet at the same time, I am terrified because especially of the war arc. Yeah, there's going to be a war arc apparently in the manga. I don't know if it's popped up in season 5 yet, or if it's going to pop up in season 5, season 6, 
whenever. But I am terrified because we all know that people can die in this show. Magna died. Uh, Night Eye died. I'm assuming the guy who was running uh, the Shihisaka died, I'm assuming. Because without Overhaul's quirk, they can't really, you know, help him. But, yeah, people can die in this show. And I am really scared because at least one person from the he on the hero side is going to possibly die in the war arc. Or even before that. Who knows? And if it's a character that we've grown attached to, we're going to have a similar situation with Night Eye again. Where everybody who sees it cries their eyes out. Including me. Anyway, I'll get to work on editing the I'll get to work on uploading this and I'll get for you fans of Hunter Hunter, I'll get uh, episodes 18 to 20 uh, edited and uh, edited and ready to go for when I can do a review. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time.